train, 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 train. Here it comes, here it comes. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Pass the lights on, maybe we get even some lens flares. I think that worked out. I have this weird fascination with shooting people shoot. Oh my god, it's getting loud now. All right, I'm ready when you are. Yo, good morning everyone. Today is a very special day here in Chicago. It's Chicago Hench time, which provides us with the perfect conditions to shoot during sunset and sunrise. And it's also a St. Paddy's Day race going on. So we have the perfect conditions to try out a new lens I just got, the Suray 50mm anamorphic lens, T2.9, 1.6 squeeze. And I just not only threw it on the Komodo, I also have the gimbal out. So we're trying out a different kind of video where I strap a GoPro and a 360 camera on me and we just go out and shoot and capture whatever we see. I'm going to talk a little bit about the lens and how I shoot, so tag along and let's see how it goes. Let's go. <laughs> let's go get him. Let's put some ND filter on. It's an 85, 82 millimeter front cap, and so it fits with most of my lenses, uh, with my, most of my ND filters as well, which is kind of handy. I'm using here the Polar Pro VND. It has a color cast, but if I use it at the lower range, the lower end, it should be fine. I like the overall build quality of those, so that's a win for sure. Okay, let's open up the aperture, get some shallow depth of field in, and get some more of the sunrise here. Oh, I wish there would be more people walking. There's a race today, like a 10k race downtown, so everything is mostly shut down, so you don't see that many cars. But I would, I would have hoped for more people walking around, honestly. They're just setting up the barriers over there. Not sure if we can capture that. Let's get a shot here. Infinity focus. So when I pull this lens to all the way infinity, it is not properly back focused. So uh, it goes out of focus. So I have to go like not all the way, but like a couple of stops before it. Let's see if I can get a photographer as a foreground subject and get some shallow depth of field maybe with the flares in the background Let's see if that's something that that works out I'm really trying out the lens here today just for shits and giggles and here look at this everybody's lined up Get some reflection here with the puddles. Under sling mode. And let's go. It's a legit workout with this gimbal and camera setup, honestly. But that's what we're here for, right? I mean, sunrise and sunset, when you have the direct sun flares, like, or the flares from the direct sunlight, it's just a good way to show off the qualities of this lens. So, when I, what I notice is that it is not like great consistency, especially in the MFT versions of the Suri lenses, in terms of the colors that the flares give. They got it a little bit more under control with the full frame ones, though mine seems to be a little greenish turquoise ish. Whereas others are a little bit more blue, so uh, be be the judge yourself. But I honestly like the color. I also like the strength of those. They're not too bad, not too like excessive, especially now as you can see, we're shooting right into the sunrise. 
and uh, you have the, the primary flare as well as the copy. So, like, they can be exaggerated possibly due to, to that lens fill, uh, through that ND filter I found. But overall, they're pretty much under well control. They're not too excessive, honestly. And that's kind of what you want to get with a, with an anamorphic lens. Many have like different kind of kind of characters. I'm overall happy with with this one uh, amongst the ones I tried and the and the adapters I've tried in the past. Let's get these people crossing the street here. That may have worked out. Let's get a police car here. And there's always people wondering, what the heck are you shooting? What's going on? And honestly, that was my first reaction as well many years ago when I was just coincidentally witnessing it. And now I'm a regular. I'm shooting at 40 frames per second right now so I can squeeze out most out of this moment because the sun is relentlessly moving on. I wonder if I can get a cool shot here coming through that alleyway. It's pretty dark, it smells like pee, but I wish there would be like a sunbeam and whoever's walking through that is getting lit up, but let's see if we can get anything out of this. Here we go. And the sunlight hits her a little bit. Nice. Okay, that may have been a good shot. Let's see. Train, 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 so, you know, like it's like two times in the year, it's in March and in October where the sunrise and the sunset just like happens right, like same, same angle as the street. So everyone with a camera is out here shooting and like just witnessing. It's beautiful. Thank you. I'll take a photograph. Yeah, enjoy. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think I hear another train. Let's see if we can get some better shots. There we go. Lens flare! I was hitting it from the side, like, brutally. But now it, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good study of the colors of lens flare. See, that's what I love about sunrises in the morning in Chicago. It's just, the sun is rising on, on that side, obviously, in the, in the east. But then the light bounces back and forth between the buildings, so even the buildings are illuminated from the other side based on the reflection. And you have just this beautiful soft light coming out down, down into the streets. I peep as my subject, let's get this guy trying to cross the street, get him in focus and let's go. I couldn't get it in focus fast enough, but that's story of my life. Oh my god, I'm gonna go on this side. See the light bouncing between the buildings, and it, I think it really nicely illuminates the train, but in front of a darkerish background, so it should pop out. So, here we go again. Patience, wait for the train to arrive. Talking about focus, I used to have, or I still have the Anamorpha, which is an adapter that you screw in front of a taking lens but the problem is or the challenge the massive challenge is, is that you have to both focus your taking lens as well as the anamorphic adapter so having now a lens that you can just like focus on with one general focus wheel is is really nice yet another feature of an anamorphic lens is the oval bokeh and i actually th think it's really beautiful it's a little bit more prevalent if you shoot at night but you can get an idea here about the beauty of an oval bokeh lens. 
The nice thing really to shoot this on the Komodo is that it automatically de-squeezes. So I'm in the 4x3 anamorphic mode, which was added a couple of updates ago. And you see it on both the screen here, as well as the internal monitor, that, that it's already de-squeezed, so you don't have to fiddle around with any monitor settings to, to interpret the, the footage. So makes focusing certainly a little bit easier. All right, here it comes, here it comes. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Has the lights on, maybe we get even some lens flares. And here we go. I think that worked out. Look at this, okay. I love these high, the elevated train tracks. If you nicely line it up, maybe we even get some flares in between. Let's see. I don't see any sun peeking through, but. Let's see. Uh oh. That wasn't planned, but worked out well. Can always count on the firefighters here in Chicago. Uh, see, it has to all work together. You have to have the right camera settings. You have to have the camera in focus. You have to have the gimbal in the right setting. This is why it's so important that you absolutely familiarize yourself with your gear and can operate it blindly. And I have not operated that gimbal in a while, so it's just slowly coming back to me. One of my favorite movers here in Chicago is the Cobra one of this jazz player. Not sure if you know Cobra, but he's that Brazilian street artist who works a lot with colors and shapes, but like plotted on top of portraits usually. So the close focus distance of this lens is about 0.8 meters or two and a half feet which is actually quite decent for an anamorphic lens, honestly. You see it here as we're shooting these letters. Although it's not the fastest lens, honestly, you get some nice depth of field. Uh, you definitely want to have your subject relatively close, but with this uh, close focus distance, you can definitely get some what people may call cinematic images. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, can I get a shot of you? Awesome. It's a film camera, so just do, yeah, just do, just do what you want to do. Like I just, I'm just testing out a new lens. What's your name? Alfonso. Alfonso. It's a beautiful name. I love that name. Thank you, Alfonso. Have a great day. All right, let's get some some runners here. Everybody's in a good mood here. I wonder if I can get a tracking shot here with the runners sideways. Just gonna pre-focus here. <laughs> Just don't want to fall. <laughs> All right, I join you now. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Thank you, man. 
Everybody loves the Komodo and the Suri anamorphic lens here apparently, they're getting all very excited. Alright, so let me know what you think about this lens down in the comment section below. I may gonna do a more in-depth review. Also, I'm curious how you like this kind of video. I uh, may gonna do more of those. And as always, if you like this video, hit the like button, thumbs up. And if you enjoyed it very much and you haven't done so already, smash that subscribe button and the notification bell. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Have a good morning, have a good night. Bye-bye.